This video is the solutions of the page 244 homework. We're using synthetic division. For the first set of questions, you're asked to use synthetic division to do division problems. I know the problems in the book had a big long fraction line and then the binomial was written in the denominator. I've typed it like this, but it means the same thing. To use synthetic division to divide, you write down the coefficients of this polynomial. 3, negative 17, 15, and negative 25. Then make the synthetic division bracket. And you're going to divide a number in on the outside. You get that number by looking over in this position. The basic format of the binomial you divide by is x minus k. k is the number after the minus sign, so in this problem, it's the 5. You write the 5 outside. Now we're going to begin the process. Bring the 3 all the way down below, and now multiply and add. 3 times 5 is 15. When you add these together, it's negative 2. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. When you add these together, it's 5. 5 times 5 is 25. When you add these together, the result is 0. Now we need to interpret this answer back into a polynomial format. This is the remainder. This is the constant term. This is the coefficient that goes with x. And this is the coefficient that goes with x squared. So let's write the answer right here. 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. There's the answer to the division problem. When you divide this four-term polynomial by x minus 5, the quotient, the answer that you get, is this trinomial. Next, number 17, another division problem. Please notice how these two terms are not in the right order. When you list down your coefficients, you have to write them in decreasing order by exponent. So 4, then 8, then the negative 9, then the negative 18. Now make the synthetic division bracket. And put the number out here that you're dividing in. Remember the basic format is x minus k, and we don't have the minus sign this time. So we need to interpret x plus 2 as being the same thing as x minus negative 2. Now we have the value of k. It's negative 2. Now let's start our process. Bring the 4 all the way below, and now multiply and add. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Adding these together makes 0. 0 times negative 2 makes 0. Adding these together is negative 9. Negative 9 times negative 2 is positive 18, and adding these together is 0. Now let's interpret this answer. Remainder, constant term, this one goes with x, this one goes with the x squared. We'll write the answer right here. 4x squared plus 0x minus 9. Next, number 19, another division problem. This time the terms are written in decreasing order, but it's missing the x squared. It's like having a 0x squared in that position. So when we list the coefficients, we're going to need to include a 0. Negative 1, then 0, then 75, then negative 250. Now the bracket. We have another case of having the plus sign there. So let's think of that as x minus negative 10. So the value we're dividing in is negative 10. And we'll run through the process. Bring down the negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 10 makes 10. Add these together, that's 10. 10 times negative 10 is negative 100. Add these together, that's negative 25. Negative 25 times negative 10 is positive 250. When you add these together, the result is 0. This is the remainder. This is the constant term. This goes with x. This goes with x squared. So our answer is negative 1x squared plus 10x minus 25. It's common to not put the 1 here, to just say negative x squared in that position.
Next, number 21. Let's list down our coefficients. 5, negative 6, 0, and 8. Do you see why there's a 0? It's because in that position it's like having a 0x. Now draw the bracket, and we're going to divide in a 4. Let's run through the process. Bring down the 5. 5 times 4 is 20. When you add these together, it's 14. 14 times 4 is 56. When you add these together, it's 56. Now we need to go 56 times 4. That's 224. And add these together, 232. This is the remainder. This is the constant. This goes with x. This goes with x squared. So our answer is 5x squared plus 14x plus 56 plus, and now for the remainder, you write 232 over what we divided by, which is x minus 4. Okay, next, number 23, sticking with this same topic. So the coefficients are 10, then negative 50, then 0 for the x squared, then 0 for the x term, and then negative 800. Here's the bracket, and we're dividing in a 6. Now let's run through the process. Bring down the 10. 10 times 6 is 60. When you add these, it's 10. 10 times 6 is 60. When you add these, it's 60. Now 60 times 6 is 360. When you add these, it's 360. Now we have 360 times 6. That's 2,160. And now we need to add these together. The result is 1,360. This number here is the remainder. This is the constant. This is the coefficient of x. This number is for x squared. This number is for x cubed. So let's record the answer over here on the side. 10x cubed plus 10x squared plus 60x plus 360 plus, and now the remainder. 1, 3, 6, 0, out of x minus 6. Next, number 25. Another division problem, and we're still supposed to use the synthetic division technique. So we have 1 from the x cubed, 0x squared, 0x, and then 512. And we're going to divide by negative 8. Now let's run through our process. Bring down the 1. This is negative 8, negative 8, 64, 64, negative 5, 12, and 0. This number is the remainder. This number is the constant. This goes with x, and this goes with x squared. So our answer is 1x squared minus 8x plus 64. Since this is just a 1, you don't have to write it. It's common to just begin with x squared in that position. Next, number 27. We have negative 3 from the x to the fourth. 0 for the x cubed. 0 for the x squared. 0 for the x. 0 for the constant. And now the bracket and we're dividing by a 2. Pull down the negative 3 to get started. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. When you add these, it's negative 6. Negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. And then that's negative 12. Negative 12 times 2 is negative 24. So this is negative 24. And negative 24 times 2 is negative 48. And so this is negative 48. This is the remainder constant, x, x squared, x cubed. So let's record our answer. Negative 3x cubed 
minus 6x squared minus 12x minus 24 and then we have plus negative 48 out of x minus 2. The other way you can show this remainder is if you put a minus sign here then just use a regular 48 up there. Next, number 29, another one of these division problems. Notice how this polynomial is written backwards. When you list your coefficients, you have to do them in order of decreasing exponent. So we have the negative 1 from the x cubed first, then the positive 2 from the x squared, then the negative 3 from the x, then the positive 5. And we're dividing in negative 1. Bring down the negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. This makes 3. This makes negative 3. This is negative 6, positive 6, and 11. So our result is negative 1x squared plus 3x minus 6 plus, and now the remainder, 11 out of x plus 1. Next, number 31. Let's list out the coefficients. 4, 16, negative 23, and negative 15. We're going to divide in negative 1 half. If fractions bother you, do this as negative 0.5. Bring down the 4. 4 times negative 1 half is negative 2. 16 and negative 2 makes 14. 14 times negative 1 half is negative 7. This adds up to negative 30. Negative 30 times negative 1 half is positive 15. And this adds up to 0. So the result is 4x squared plus 14x minus 30. So even though there was a fraction, it was pretty easy to multiply numbers by 1 half. Okay, finally the directions are changing. Use synthetic division to show that the given value of x is a zero of the polynomial. Then use the result to factor the polynomial completely. Then list all real zeros of the function. Then verify the zeros with your graphing calculator. So we have to do all four of these things. The first thing we're asked to do is to verify that x equals 2 is a zero of the function meaning when we substitute 2 into the function, that it turns out to be 0. And we're told to use synthetic division when we substitute it in. So let's write out the coefficients. 2, negative 15, 27, and negative 10. And we're dividing in a 2. Bring down the 2 and multiply. This makes negative 11. This is negative 22. This makes 5, this makes 10, and the remainder is 0. Because the remainder is 0, that is our verification that substituting in 2 creates the final result 0. Okay, this first part is done. Next, we want to use the result to factor the polynomial completely. Once we get this remainder of 0, we know that these three coefficients are the coefficients of a trinomial. The 2, negative 11, and 5 mean the trinomial 2x squared minus 11x plus 5. This is a factorable trinomial using FOIL. 2x times x is the 2x squared. A negative 5 here and a negative 1 here multiply together to make the positive 5. And the outer product, which is negative 10x, and the inner product, which is negative 1x, combine together to make the negative 11x. So here are two factors, but there is a third factor. Remember that we had started the process by knowing that one of the zeros is x equals 2. So there's actually three factors to this. g of x is equal to x minus 2 
times 2x minus 1 times x minus 5. The x minus 2 factor comes from our original knowledge that x equals 2 is a 0. Then these two factors came when we factored the trinomial right here. That takes care of this second piece. Next, we're asked to list all the real zeros. Well, we know one of them to begin with. We're told that one of the zeros was 2. We can get our other two zeros by looking at our factors. This first factor is the one that gives us 2. But what's the value of x here that would make this factor be 0? If we have 2x minus 1 equals to 0 and solve this, we would have 2x is equal to 1, therefore x is equal to 1 half. So another 0 is 1 half. In the last factor, what's the 0? What's the value of x that would make this be 0? That's a 5. We have done this part of the question. The final thing to do is to verify that those are the three zeros by using your graphing calculator and locating the x-intercepts. When you use the y1 to type in this function and you push graph, it's going to make a curvy shape on the screen. And that curve is going to cross the x-axis in three spots. We just want to make sure that it crosses at the 2, at the half, and at the 5. So that's something you do on your graphing calculator. Next, number 39. Express the function in a particular format for the given value of k. Then demonstrate that f of k is equal to the remainder r. We're going to do this by using synthetic division. So let's write our coefficients down. 1, negative 1, negative 14, and 11. The number that we're dividing in on the outside is our value of k. We're told k is equal to 4. So let's divide in a 4 and run through our process. 1, 4, 3, 12, negative 2, negative 8, and 3. Now let's interpret those results into this format that we're asked to use. We can do that right here f of x equals, when it says x minus k in parentheses, we're going to write x minus 4, because the k was a 4. Now times q of x. What the q of x is, is this part right here. That's our q of x. It is a trinomial where this goes with x squared, this goes with x, and this is the constant. So we have x squared plus 3x minus 2. And then when it says plus r, that's the remainder. That's our value of r. So we're going to write plus 3 on the end of this. So we have done this first part where we were asked to express the function in this form. The thing that's left to do is to demonstrate that f of k is equal to r. Meaning when you plug in 4 into the function, you actually get the result of 3. Well, we've already shown this with the synthetic division approach to this. We could show it using direct substitution if you like. But this synthetic division shows that when you put in 4 for the k, you get 3 for the r. So that takes care of this piece. Next question. Use synthetic division and the remainder theorem, whoops, I spelled this wrong, this should say remainder theorem, to find the function values. We want to figure out what f of 1 is, but we're not going to use direct substitution. We're not going to plug in 1 here and here and do it on the calculator. We're asked to do the synthetic division technique. So let's list the coefficients. 4, 0, negative 13, and 10. Then make the bracket and divide in a 1. Now follow through the process. 4, 4, 4, 4, negative 9, negative 9, and 1. When we substituted in a 1, we got the answer of 1. So f of 1 coincidentally is equal to 1.
Now question B. Let's list our coefficients again. 4, 0, negative 13, and 10. And this time, we're going to divide in negative 2. So you bring down the 4, and then this is negative 8, negative 8, 16, 3, negative 6, and 4. We got the remainder of 4, therefore f of negative 2 is equal to 4. Now question C. Let's write down the coefficients again. 4, 0, negative 13, and 10. This time, we're dividing in a half. And let's run through our process. 4, 4 times a half is 2, so this makes 2. 2 times a half makes 1, so this is negative 12. And negative 12 times a half is negative 6, and so this makes 4. Our remainder is 4, therefore this is equal to 4. Now question D. Run through the same process. 4, 0, negative 13, and 10. And this time we're dividing in an 8. So you bring down the 4, and this makes 32, and this is 32. Now 32 times 8, that's 256. Now add those together. The result is 243. Now multiply 243 times 8. The result is 1944. Then add these together and it's 1954. This is our remainder, and so that's the function value. Our last question has the exact same directions. Find these values not by direct substitution, but by synthetic division. So we have 3, 5, negative 10, and 1. And we're dividing in a 3. Bring down the 3. This makes 9. This is 14. 3 times 14 makes 42. This is 32. 3 times 32 is 96. And so this is 97. So our answer is 97. Let's do the problem again. 3, 5, negative 10, and 1. And we're dividing in 1 third. Bring down the 3. 3 times a third makes 1. This makes 6. 6 times a third makes 2. This makes negative 8. Negative 8 times a third is negative 8 thirds. Now we want to add these together. Think of the number 1 as being the same thing as 3 thirds. So 3 thirds minus 8 thirds is negative 5 thirds. So our answer is negative 5 thirds. You could give a mixed number for that or a repeating decimal. Next, question C. We have to write down our same coefficients. 3, 5, negative 10, and 1 and divide in negative 2. So this is 3, negative 6, negative 1, 2, negative 8, 16, 17. The answer is 17. One final question. We have 3, 5, negative 10, and 1. And we're dividing in negative 5. Bring down the 3. This is negative 15. These add up to negative 10. This makes positive 50. This adds up to 40. 40 times negative 5 is negative 200. And this makes negative 199. So the answer is negative 199. If at any point you want to check that you're doing the synthetic division correctly, you can use direct substitution with the original equation. Take negative 5. Plug it in for x, for x, for x. Take your calculator, type it all in with the exponents and everything. And when you hit enter, it should make negative 199. This concludes the answer key video for the homework assignment.